I recently finished my latest short film and we're gonna go over how I did all the lighting on them because lighting is a huge part of making your videos look good aside from things like framing and there was a lot that went into this from the lighting coming from the window for the sunset, key lights, fill lights, other ambient lights going on and lighting plays a huge role so let's take a look at how to make your videos look good. So on my camera monitor as we were starting, this is what it looked like. And there's a lot of things going into this. You can see coming from the window, we have some sunset lighting coming in. And for that light, you can see as we move over here, I went out onto the roof and set up this, I think it was my suit photo light, the RGB. I have a video on that that I made last year as well really good light for a good price you've got all kinds of cool effects it's an rgb light as well as normal color temperature as you can see we're in the rgb setting here and i made it pretty saturated pretty intense look because this is an adaption from a cartoon so i want it to be a little bit more stylized a little more saturated for this and i like the way that this turned out here so we have that as the sunset light coming in and uh, you can see in these scenes here it doesn't look quite as saturated as it did in the monitor because i had a LUT on but behind them you can see it's kind of lighting up the window more so but then kind of a soft pink sunset light coming in from the background so just a plain wall that's kind of dark looking and as we go through the various scenes it's a little bit of a key light for us here this one's a little more saturated because i had it closer and as we go throughout the color changes a little bit which is something you have to keep in mind this is a scene where we start out in the beginning of the film like this so it's starting to go into sunset it's bedtime for the kids putting them down and then by the end it looks like this it's more dark so as we go throughout this i'd go out after the various scenes were filmed and dial down the brightness of a little bit dial down the saturation a bit so by the time we got towards this last scene now it's kind of more of a purplish just tiny bit of pink on the wall back behind it and i think it turned out pretty well so that was one of the main lights i wanted for this shot and then also we have here a light in the lamp so instead of just turning the lamp on you don't really want to do that because for one you can't control the color temperature and also two you see how bright this light is behind me to make me bright enough these lights are super overexposed so if you look at the shots here it just looks like a nice little light in the background and a good motivational light for these close up shots if you want to set up a hair light behind them or just making sense why there's a little bit of light on other stuff you have a practical light there and it's not too bright because i think i had the brightness on this thing set down see even here it looks fine i think i had it set down to like five percent or something like that and this is another small useful rgb led that i've used in all kinds of settings i like how the arm hooks over here so you can see it worked well on the lamp i could hook it on there and kind of angle it how i wanted change the color temperature change the brightness it worked out really well and i'll have links in the description for all the various lights i use as well as all my camera gear so if you're interested you know you can check those out there or just if you have any questions post them in the comments about gear lighting setups or whatever and i'll try to help you out there so so moving along we have that and then coming over here I had this I believe that's my we light is the name of the brand I forget what the number is but I made a video on it last year as well I'll have a card up there if you want to check it out but the same thing this is just a I believe 5000 Kelvin light so you can't change the color temperature of this one they do have a version that you can and uh, that's it so this thing I usually use for my YouTube videos or if I want some daylight stuff but for this I didn't want to turn it and face it directly on us because it would be really bright and then like the bed over here would look darker and I wanted kind of a uniform light in the room as if you had the overhead light on because when you're starting out with videos I used to just think that good lighting meant that my videos weren't grainy so I'd turn as many lights on as I could and be like okay it looks good but that doesn't look good I start out all these scenes with the bedroom lights completely off don't even use the overhead light and then I had this light set up as bright as it could go bouncing off the wall so everything is kind of evenly lit if i had it towards us there'd be a lot more shadows there'd be shadows behind us that were harsher and this just worked out really well having kind of a brighter look for everyone and as you can see everyone came out the girls were lit just fine but when i sat up i wanted to have a little bit more of a fill light on my face over here kind of a warmer one so as we see we come around here i just got a little gorilla pod and used another small led that has a color temperature control on it it also has rgb and other stuff as well and i believe i made i think this is my small rig light got a video on it as well all these lights are good having all these little small leds big ones rgb color temperature all those things make a huge difference and it's really helpful so as we go through that you see all these different lights set up and you know 
kids' room is a mess, put all the junk behind us so that it would look like the room was somewhat clean. But, and also, you know, audio is really important. So we have here, I had my road mic overhead to pick up the girls and me, but then this microphone that I use in most of my videos I'm using right now is the ECM B1M. This is a really good mic. So I just set it up on another camera. I was recording on like, I think HD setting on this uh, a7 III just so I get the audio from it because you want to have multiple audio options available as well as a uh, mic underneath my shirt. So lots of options there if the audio is bad. It's really a pain because then especially these close-up shots trying to do voiceovers is a pain. I think I did do a voiceover for Jill's because she was further back here and the mic didn't pick her up as well. But for her, it wasn't a big deal. Trying to do it with the kids and getting the timing just right is a bit of a pain. So that's the overall look we got there for the main setup. And as we went through, when you're filming stuff, you're not necessarily filming in chronological order. I got the script out and said, okay, these are all the shots where we're going to be in this position. Um, there's only one shot in this initial position. And then we have a few close-up shots here, a few shots like this where we're all together. And so you don't want to constantly be changing lighting, be like, okay, let's do this shot. Okay, we got to go back to where we started. So while you have the lighting the same, just make it work. And I actually did set up one more light later for this shot because since they were in front of us and the lights bouncing off the wall behind them, I set up another light outside. It's just an old cheap light I got on Amazon that's a kind of yellowish looking light so that there'd be a little bit more light on her face. And then I think I did turn around one of the lights here to light that up just a little bit. As we got into a couple of these close-ups like here, I was using the outside light pretty much the sunset as a key light on the two of us. There are only two close-up shots like that, like here and there. And I thought it made it look pretty nice. And the rest of the light behind us is still just from that lamp that was in the corner and also from that light bouncing off the wall behind us. But one of the big things is right here was one of the hardest ones to deal with because I like how the lighting worked out here. Her face is lit well enough. She's good. Riley, don't really see much of the front of her face. That's one hard thing too. I said, everyone try to keep your bodies turned toward the camera and not turn your back towards it. But for her, key lights, kind of the uh, outside light coming in as well as for me. But this is what it looked like when we filmed it because I wanted to film outside. I didn't want to try to film during the actual sunset because then the light's going to be changing a lot. This took us over three hours to get all these different scenes done. And uh, so it's dark outside and you can see it looks kind of strange like this. We have a really bright orange light right there. It's all dark. This one's kind of white over here and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then we went from that to that. Lots of work went into that with masking, putting in backgrounds, putting in sunsets, changing the blur on it, trying to change all the coloring to make it match, sunsets matching these lights. A whole lot went into it. If you're interested in figuring out how to do that, I'll make another video. Just let me know down in the comments about how to mask in Final Cut Pro, how to make sunset backgrounds and all that type of stuff to make your stuff look more realistic because it would have been pretty bad if I just left it like this. It wouldn't have looked very good. And something to keep in mind when you are filming something like that, you notice no one's really in front of the window here. I was making sure no one moved their hands in front of it because when you're masking a background like this, it's hard enough to go through and cut out all these various pieces. But if as soon as someone's hand or face or body or whatever goes in front of that window, now you're gonna have to do a keyframe over that whole thing and it makes it just so much more difficult. So a little planning ahead really will make a big difference in this case. But as we went through here, you know, I would adjust lights a little bit as we did the different things. These were the last scenes we did with just the two of us and the close up so that uh, I could get the lighting how I wanted on us and not have to worry about setting it back up for everyone else. This one here, was a little bit different. I changed the angle of the balance light a little bit. The outside light didn't change much aside from me dialing it down a little bit as we moved along and that light stayed the same. In here, it's just a wider shot of that same thing. And then here at the end, you notice the outside, it looks a little bit darker purple. It's trying to make it match this actual sunset we got. After the fact, I actually got this final shot the night before we released the film. I was just waiting and waiting. It kept being bad weather. I was like, I really need this shot because these are the opening and closing scenes of this, a, a good sunset. And thankfully a little bit of clouds rolled in. So all that color bounced off of them and it ended up working out well. But as you can see here, I dimmed the light a bunch, tried to match the outside and it's mostly just the light bouncing off the wall now at that point. Cause if I just had the overhead light on, we'd all have kind of raccoon faces, shadows under the eyes and it not look very good, but that's in a nutshell how we did this scene. 
started with it looking like that. I was really happy with how it turned out. But if you have any questions about lighting or what kind of lights you should use for what situations, whatever, there's all kinds of stuff that goes into it. Post them down in the comments. I'll try to help you out the best that I can. Hit that like button if you like this video. If you want to see more like it, let me know. Subscribe if you're new for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.